What's up, Nerdyverse? I'm Daddy Louie, and in this video, we are taking a look at a game called Banana Hammock. So stick around. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for more content and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Banana Hammock is an upcoming mid-October Kickstarter from Mind Ramen Games. Uh, it is for uh, two to four players. It is for ages eight and up, and it takes between 15 and 45 minutes to play. Uh, in the game, players will be employees of the Banana Grabbers Packing Company. Uh, you are going to be playing cards, uh, bunching together bananas, packing them in crates in order to score points. However, other players against you can use specialty bananas and monkeys to try and mess with your crates and screw with your points. Um, so it's definitely an I gotcha kind of game, uh, but also has, you know, a party game feel to it. But is it good? Well, if you join me on the table, we'll check it out. All right, so first and foremost, um, as always, since this is a Kickstarter, uh, this is a prototype copy that I have here. It looks and feels pretty much like the final version of the game, uh, but I just want to throw that disclaimer out there that uh, everything that you see here is, of course, subject to change. Um, so uh, the main component, or the only component of the game, really, are cards. Uh, so we have our big stack of cards that consists of bananas and monkeys, uh, this is the main uh, part of the game that we're going to be taking a look at. There's also a separate stack of face-up banana peels. Uh, anytime you are forced to consume uh, a banana, you receive a banana peel. Uh, they kind of clog up your hand. Um, they're not useless. You can bunch them together and play them for points. Uh, you can also discard them in order to counter the effects of a monkey card. Um, however, you can never consume a banana peel. Uh, and that's important, as you'll find out in a second. Uh, there's also one uh, finale card. The finale card is basically what's going to trigger the end game. So this card is going to be shuffled into the main deck once everybody's received their opening hand. And uh, once it's drawn, you immediately draw a card, and then you choose a banana card in your hand to be eaten. Uh, that's where these banana peels, uh, like I said, come uh, become an important uh, because if your hand is clogged with banana peels, or you only have a banana peel and rotten bananas, those can't be eaten. So uh, if you get to the point where you draw one of these cards and there's nothing in your hand that you can, uh, that you can eat, uh, then that triggers the end game. The game ends immediately, and uh, points are then counted up. Uh, if you can consume a banana, then you shuffle this guy back into the main deck, and play continues. Uh, so there will always get to be a point in the game where whoever draws this will not be able to consume a banana. Uh, that might be early in the game, uh, or it might be late in the game. So you never know when the end game is going to trigger. And then finally, we have our player cards. Uh, these are double-sided. They have some cute uh, artwork on the front, and then um, basically just some reminders on the back. Um, I'd really honestly like to see them uh, include in the Kickstarter, maybe, uh, like some little employee uh, clips so that people could put these like on their, uh, on their shirts um, or whatever while they're playing. I think that would be really fun. And then maybe, uh, you know, while they have them on them, they could, you know, flip them up and be able to look at the, uh, you know, information and put them back down. Uh, that was something that my play group in particular really... Uh, thought would be something that was really cool but uh the rules are pretty straightforward let me set up for a quick game and i'll show you how it plays all right so uh at the start of the game every player gets five cards face down uh you then uh will take that uh finale card you're going to shuffle it into the main deck here and then keep your banana peels face up next to it um at the start of your turn each player will draw a card and then they will announce if they are either going to play a monkey or banana cards. If the card that they chose has an exclamation mark on it, um, that is a uh, card that has an effect on it that then immediately takes place um, before you do anything else. 
Uh, but as long as you didn't draw one of those, you would draw a card, and then you're going to choose banana or monkey. Uh, if you choose to play a monkey, you play the monkey and then do whatever the monkey says. If you choose to play banana, you are then going to basically make bunches of bananas to put in your crate. So uh, all of the bananas, for the most part, have a bunch symbol down in the right-hand corner, and how many bananas are required of that type in order to bunch it. And then over here, it will tell you how many points that particular banana bunch is worth inside of your crate. So in the uh, case of this DNA sliced banana here, it says, after a monkey card uh, is played from the hand of another opponent, base of another player, this uh, banana then moves over to uh, where that monkey card was played. Um, so you want to play this for the points, but you also don't want it to go to your opponent. So you may want to wait and play that later. Um, but it only requires one. So I can basically just play it by itself as a bunch in my crate. So um, I also have some monkeys here. We'll talk about those in a minute. And then I have some bananas. Bananas are usually played... Uh, in pairs as a bunch. So this spotty banana here, I would need two of them in order to play them as a bunch, and that bunch is worth two points. And it says this bunch can be discarded to choose any card in the discard pile, reveal it, and add it to your hand. Um, so once it's in your crate, you could then discard it in order to get um, another card from the discard pile. Uh, rotten banana is one that we talked about a minute ago. It can never be consumed in the event that you need to eat, um, you know, a banana. And uh, you actually don't place it in your crate. You place it in other players' crates. And you get negative points for it um, if it's in your crate. And you also get negative points for it if it's in your hand. So holding on to it isn't worth it either. Um, and there's all kinds of different bananas like that. Uh, you'll notice the art here is really, really neat in this game. Uh, they actually got a local comic book artist to do all of the art. Um, so you're going to notice that uh, that awesome art style throughout. Um, actually, my favorite art in the whole game is on a promo card, which I can't even show you because uh, that's something that they're going to be um, uh, revealing for the Kickstarter. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, here's an interesting one. This is the Ticking Time Banana. Uh, it says attach to a bunch in a player's crate and then discard the attached bunch at the start of that player's turn. Uh, the player may discard a banana peel from their hand to instead attach this card to another bunch in any player's crate. So basically you can just keep discarding um, banana peels around until it ends up sticking and it basically blows up a bunch in someone's crate. Um, so after you have either uh, said monkey or banana and played the cards that you're going to play, uh, when you say monkey, you're only playing one monkey. If you say banana, you can play as many bananas as you can bunch together and put in your crate. Once your turn is over, you're going to discard down to uh, five cards because uh, that is your maximum hand limit, and then you're going to pass to the next player. Uh, one more thing to note is any time that you play a bunch, in your crate for points, uh, you can then draw another card. So for example, um, you know, I drew a card, I have this DNA spliced banana, so I'm gonna say banana, I'm gonna play that into my crate, and then I get to draw a card. Now I've got another spotty banana in which I can play those two cards into my crate, and then I can draw another card. Now this card that I've drawn has an exclamation, so it happens immediately. So I play it, and each player with more than one bunch chooses a bunch in their crate to be eaten. You draw a card. Uh, so that, that would only affect me in this case. So I would need to eat a bunch. I think I'm going to eat this one. It gets discarded, and then I get to draw a card. Uh, and I have another spotted banana, which I can, or spotty banana, which I can use later on. Uh, one final thing to note about that uh, interaction that just happened was any time that I have to uh, eat a banana, I gain a banana peel for the banana that I ate. Um, so I clearly have too many cards in my hand. I can discard the uh, banana peel if I want to, um, but I, I think early here on the game I really want to get rid of this rotten banana. Uh, so I'm going to ditch that, and uh, I'm down to five, and I would pass to the next player. 
So that's the uh, that's the order of operations that's going to happen. Uh, on your turn, you're going to draw a card. If it has an exclamation mark, uh, you're going to play it and resolve it right away. Um, otherwise, you're going to choose banana or uh, monkey. Monkeys get played one, uh, one on your turn. Bananas can be played as much as you can place bananas in bunches into your crate. Uh, and then you're going to discard down to five and then pass to the next player. You're going to keep doing that until that uh, finale card is drawn. Uh, once the finale card is drawn, uh, like I said, you're going to do what it says, draw a card, choose a banana in your hand to be eaten, and then shuffle this card back into the deck. If you cannot eat a banana, the game ends. So in this case, I do have, uh, I can't eat the banana peel, but I do have two other bananas that I could eat. So I could eat the spotted banana, which would draw me a banana peel, and then this would get shuffled back into the deck. That keeps happening until uh, no one can, or until the person who draws that cannot eat a banana, in which case we then tally up the points from our crate, and the person with the highest amount of points in their crate wins. And that, guys, is everything that you need to know in order to play Banana Hammock. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. I completely forgot to uh, mention a core mechanic of the game here, and that's the actual banana hammock. So each player has a banana hammock. It's a card that they can take from their hand and place it face down. It's basically a card that you're saving for later. Uh, there are things that can target people's banana hammock, but for the most part, that's going to be a card that's going to stay face down. No one else can see it, and it basically gives you a sixth card in the hole, if you will. Um, so on my turn, you can manipulate your banana hammock once per turn. Um, by taking a card and placing it face down. Now, if I have a card in my banana hammock, I can pick it up and switch it out with something else. Again, only once per turn. Um, and that's kind of how the banana, banana hammock works. Um, it's kind of easily forgotten um, for newer players because, um, at least in our experience while we were playing, we just keep kept forgetting that we could do something with the banana hammock. Um, you don't have like a, a player card or anything to remind you that that's something that can be placed there. And, you know, honestly, I forgot when I was just explaining to you how to play, but it is, um, a part of the game, uh, that, that is there. So once you've played a few times, you do get used to it being there. So don't forget that you do have that ability on your turn to put a card, your ace in the hole, uh, for you to save later. Um, there are, like I said, there are things that can manipulate it, but for the most part, it stays pretty much untouched. Um, and now that's everything that I can think of, uh, that you need to know in order to play Banana Hammock. So as you can see, this game is really easy to play, uh, really easy to learn, but there definitely are some deeper strategies here. You could definitely use this game as a gateway towards, uh, more difficult games, uh, and don't let the fact that um, I'm easily that I easily forgot about one of the mechanics of the game, um, you know, steer you away from this game. Uh, because honestly, that's something that I did quite a bit when we were playtesting the game. Um, maybe there's something that they could include a token or something to remind you that you have a hammock, something for you to lay that card down on. Uh, it, it was something that not just myself, but all the other players in our play group just were constantly forgetting about um, the ability that they had to put a card into, you know, their, their hammock, the ace in the hole. Uh, when we did do it, it was clutch, and those cards definitely came in handy, and I think it's a really cool mechanic. I just think that there needs to be something included in the game uh, to help folks remember that, um, that that is an option for them to have, um, you know, a card saved, if you will. Um, other than that, uh, the mechanics are solid. The art is great. Um, like I said, definitely um, could use this game as a gateway game. You could also use it as a party game, although it's not really a party game since it's only two to four players. Um, and it, it's eight and up, so the mechanics are easy enough for, uh, for younger kids to play. Um, there are some adult innuendos, but I didn't see anything that was like raunchy or you know anything that would steer me away from allowing my kids to play it um and we're pretty sensitive to stuff like that so 
Um, this game, it's just a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun playing it. Um, I think if they just, you know, I'd like to see them give us like little badge holders for our, uh, for our ID cards. And, uh, I'd like to see some kind of token or something, maybe something for you to place your, um, to place your hammock card on just as a visual reminder that that's something that, uh, an option that you do have to do. Um, so all that to say, I will leave links to everything in the description below. Go and check them out mid-October on Kickstarter and show them some love. They deserve it. Anyway, guys, what do you think of Banana Hammock? Let me know in the comments section below. Um, if you uh, want more from the Circle of Nerds, you can find us over on all of our social media. We've got the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, all at Circle of Nerds. Also, don't forget that we have a podcast that comes out weekly right here on YouTube or anywhere that you enjoy listening to podcasts. And um, our big show, Cosmic Disasters, is actually going to be live very, very soon. We're bringing that to be uh, uh, to a live platform. Uh, so keep your ear to the ground and uh, stay tuned for more information. Uh, we're really excited about that transition. And um, for an extra bit of love and affection, uh, definitely check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash circle of nerds. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. I'll see you in the next video.